What's up guys and welcome to another Android app review. I'm your host as always Headphones Neil bringing you a general and basic overview of my favorite um, ability to customize my Android home screen in the form of the app Custom Live Wallpaper Maker otherwise known as KLWP. Um, what you'll see or what I'm going to do in this particular review is show how to create your own dynamic um, media player. I have that set up just because I do have one app for my mp3 player and one for my podcast client. So you can actually save some of the steps if you do use a single client for, that handles both like Spotify. Um, and that's actually the only one that really comes to mind. But you know, if you're using a client that supports both, then great. Or even if you're using, I think, Double Twist Media Player handles music and MP3 players. But in my case, I basically or mostly use um, local, or I play local MP3 files, and then I also download um, podcast clients. So I have two separate apps. That's um, why I kind of came up with a solution. But you can actually save a step if you're using one. So. What I'm going to do, and I'm going to retroactively go back and recreate the same media player. So if you see this little blue box beneath my weather widget, you'll see that I have um, the album named, track title, artist, playback controls, and then shortcuts to my MP3 player and my podcast client. So I can easily access those, playback, progress, and track time. But the nifty thing that I like about this is once you start playing a track, it will extract the... Um, extract colors from that um, tracks cover image so that you get a nice clean looking um, color to go with your track so once I hit play um, and I'm gonna toggle it a little bit just because it doesn't always pull the track the color right away so sometimes you have to force it to do it but for the most part it should and then you'll also see that my progress um, bar, so that dot and the little color you see on the left will also update every time I change the track. So this is the colors that's pulling from my current track image. But when I hit next, it'll update the colors a little bit. It's still kind of red focused. But once you go to the next one, you'll see it's a little bit more um, of a matted pink and then a hot pink for the progress bar. My next track is more blue focused and so on and so forth. So essentially you have a nice little um, dynamically updated MP3 player or MP3 player widget. And then once I hit pause, I have the background color changed to the colors extracted from the current image I have set in custom live wallpaper maker. So not only do I have, or that's part of a twofold process. So once music is not playing, I kind of want a visual indicator that my music is top. Granted, I can listen and, um, solve that problem that way. But this is just kind of a visual thing to make sure I hit pause if I'm not really paying attention, if I'm in a loud area or something like that. So the uh, background of this particular part of my custom live wallpaper maker will change to the colors extracted from my image. But I also have my play pause button change. So when music, when music is not playing, it shows the play button, but when music is playing, it shows the, the pause button. And all of this is handled, and everything I said is handled directly through Custom Live Wallpaper Maker. So let's jump right into it. So when you open Custom Live Wallpaper Maker, you can either import a preset or create your own. In this case, I've already um, started creating my own. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show some of the presets to get where we want to go. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a global variable and you're going to uh, give it a title. You can call it whatever you want. That's easy for you to remember. I just called mine image and changed it from color to bitmap. And so once you do that, now you'll have to pick the image that you want as your wallpaper. Um, I am doing it this way so that we can extract the colors for the me um, media player later. But also, um, so we can have your background change dynamically. So rather than have to go to two places to change um, settings, you just have to change your image and the rest of it will take it from there. Um, part of this also is... Um, I so if you see my dock down at the bottom with all these icons, the same way that I'm pull, extracting the color for my media player, I also have that background changing for my icons at the bottom. So let's say I change this image, my wallpaper to uh, the one that's more reddish or orangish or orangish or a different shade of blue. Both of these, my media player background and 
the icons at the bottom, those backgrounds there will also all change colors automatically. And that's all done just by changing the global variable. The last piece that will change is the wallpaper itself. So once I change it to somebody something else, that will also change by itself. So, you know, think of it like a um, database table that's one to many. So you change one thing and a bunch of every or a bunch of other things change automatically. And that's the power of custom live wallpaper maker. Um, creating a weather widget and notifications. The weather widget is actually also kind of um, simple and straightforward. I'm having the background color pull from my um, icon for today weather. So that's a, something that's kind of outside of what I wanted to do just because it's a few extra steps that take us outside of custom live wallpaper maker. But to get around that, if you want to use your own icon pack or um, extract colors from images for various things uh, from, you know, icons and things like that, or you're using a separate icon pack like I am, then you can use an app called IconZ. That's I-C-O-N-Z-Y that will let you extract icons from icon packs and then use them in um, custom live wallpaper maker. Um, so with that, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a media player widget. So one of the th um, simplest ways or the basically the only way to get to creating a new element is by touching this plus sign at the top of your screen. So when you do that, you'll get a menu of various options. and. So the, it starts with basic things like text, shape, images, font icons, and things like that, which I'm going to get to everything as I create all of these things. So the reason I'm talking about a media player is the media player I create um, is going to cover a little bit of everything. So what we're going to use to start is an overlap group. This is because the background is not is behind all of the other elements, so creating an overlap. So what we're, I'm going to move this uh, thing and also as you're one of the little side things is as you're using the um, app and you start having a list of different elements, you can actually hold your finger down on these um, grid of dots on the left next to the label and you can move your elements around so um, they're easier to get to. So now with the overlap group, what I'm going to do is um, the first thing you want to think about is where you're going to place it on your screen. So if you go over to position, um, the default is top, but you can easily move it to specific parts of your screen so they're easy to get to um, or they're exactly where you want them to be. So in this case, I'm going to put center so it shows up as we add elements to show up in the middle of the screen. But let's say you want to move things around a little bit. You want things offset to the left or right a little bit. You can use this X offset to go left and right, and then the Y offset to go up and down. So from here, we're going to go back to our items tab. Right now it's blank, so we need to start adding elements. So the first thing we're going to add is a background. So you're going to click on the plus sign, and in this case we want to add a uh, rectangular shape. So you're going to click on shape, and the default is square. You see a small little square in the middle of the screen. So when you click on shape, you can you get all your various options. So from here, you can when you touch the word square, you get a menu of different shapes to pick. So you can do circle. Um, so let's say you want to just create a simple um, a dynamic icon with a progress bar around it. You can do that. Um, or if you want a square and you know with text on it, you can do things like that. So in this case, we're going to do rectangle. Now, you can either manually change the size of the rectangle or you can set some automated items. So in this case, I'll show just to show a, a basic formula. For the width, let's say you want the width of your media player to be the width of your screen. So once you, if you touch this box on the right next to width, next to this uh, on that line, and then touch the calculator at the top right of your screen, you'll see that it changes a little bit in formatting. So when you touch your number, you'll get another screen for formula, and you want it. And so Custom Live Wallpaper Maker has a way of detecting the size, the width and height of your screen. So if you go to System Info and then scroll down a little bit, you'll see all these various inf bits of information as far as um, things you can use in this particular formula. So from here, we're going to go down and you're going to see something called width of root container in custom points. So the width of my home screen is 720 by 1606. So I'm going to click width and then you're going to touch the check mark 
and you'll see that the width automatically changes to the width of my screen. This is also useful, so if you want to know what the width of your screen is but want to adjust it accordingly, you can do that. For the height, we're not going to change anything just because we don't want the height of our uh, media player to be the full height of the screen. So I'm gonna, for now, I'm going to change it to something big like um, 400 just to make sure things fit. And as you can see, it's going behind my current media player. So if you go back, and I'm going to adjust the position a little bit so and move it down so that way um, we see everything we want. Now, one of the th other features I like is with Android 12, you have a more rounded UI with widgets and um, your toggles on your home screen and things like that. So one of the things I do is I'll ch you can change the corners of your background to be whatever you want. So dragging the bar across, you can um, adjust it um, autom kind of easily that way using the slider, or you can just touch the number and adjust the number to whatever you want. So I'm gonna change it to 20. That's a good number for me, I like that. Now from here, we want the ch color of, this, of our background to change according to our uh, current track, but also when the track is not playing to be a particular color or transparent. So again, we're going to touch this box on the right and touch the formula button. And then we're going to touch the calculator here and you can now enter a formula. So it's a simple if then statement that you can do. So all formulas have start with a dollar sign. And then in this case, we're going to do if. And in this case, we want custom live wallpaper maker to, de to detect when music is playing or not playing. So we're going to do MI open parentheses state close parentheses equals playing so we want so in this case if music is playing we want to set a color so then you're going to hit comma and you can either set a manual color or you can set an automatic color so what you're going to do um, now is you're going to scroll down in the bitmap palette section there's already a feature or function set that's part of custom live wallpaper maker to pull the color from your albums or your music albums cover art. So I'm gonna, you can do muted or vibrant. I'm gonna select muted so that we can use a vibrant color later for our progress bar. So I'm gonna do uh, muted. So now this will say when music is playing, use the current playing tracks uh, extra or extract the color from the currently playing tracks cover image. And then when music is not playing we want another color. So in this case, we're gonna go back and one of the features of a recent update for Custom Live Wallpaper Maker is that it can detect the colors from your um, wallpaper. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to System Info and then you're gonna scroll down and you're going to, you'll see an option called Primary Color of Wallpaper 1 or Secondary Color of Wallpaper 1. Alternatively, you can use the same formula as the music player, but use the image of your, um, use the colors from your global image. So I'm going to go back to um, bitmap palette, extract muted color, but we're going to delete music cover and we're going to use our global image, which is already set. And then we're going to close parentheses and dollar sign. So now it's saying that the parentheses are mismatched, meaning I forgot to set the proper conditions somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is check. So I see that there's two um, um, parentheses around at the end of MI cover, and there's two at the end of my formula here, but I'm missing one more parentheses. So I, once you set that, you'll see the hex code, color code show up. So you'll hit the check mark, and now you see my um, image is changed to a blue. What you can do to make sure your formula is working correctly is when you exit Custom Live Wallpaper Maker and hit save, mine is already set as a wallpaper, but if you, or if it's the first time you're setting it, it'll ask you if you want to set it as your home screen, a home wallpaper, a lo uh, lock screen wallpaper, or both. So I just do home. So now that I've saved it, I am going to um, play a track and make sure that the ch color changes, it did. So I'm gonna change a couple of tracks, make sure it uh, tracks through properly, so it does, so we're all set there. So now I'm gonna go to Custom Live Wallpaper Maker and hit Edit, go to my Overlap group. Now I need to add some elements for my track. 
So first thing I'm going to do is I want to add the current tracks image and track information. So I'm going to hit the plus sign. Now I'm going to do a stack group and then also a nested stack group for the track information. So for the stack group, first thing I'm going to do is change, go to the layer tab, change it to horizontal center. So the cover image and track information will show next to each other. I'll go back to items and you can click on the plus sign. You can either do image or shape. Um, with image, you just get the image that's set, but with shape, you can also set the corners to be rounded like the background. So if you want it to match, that's the better way to go. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to shape. I'm going to leave it as a square, but you could just as easily make it a, a circle or a rectangle or something along those lines, whatever makes whatever fits to what you want to do. So I'm going to change the size to 100 and I'm going to change my corners to 20 just like my background so the curvature matches. Now to set my the cover image on this shape, I'm going to go to FX, I'm going to go to texture and then bitmap because the images saved on your home screen or in your library are considered uh, bitmaps. Same thing it goes with streaming services that support this. For the bitmap, I'm going to touch the box, change it to a formula, touch the formula, and now under music info, once you scroll down, you'll see current cover image to be used in image module or background as formula. So when you do that, every time your custom live wallpaper maker picks up on a piece of music that's playing and it detects the cover image, it will pull that and set it in this image. And then you'll hit the check mark. So you have saved. Now from here, we need to add some track information. So I'm going to go back to my stack group for the listing where I added my shape for the image. As you go, the one thing I also do recommend as a side note is to label all your various elements so you know exactly where you are. So when you hit the check mark or the box check box on the right and then hit this pencil icon, you can change the name of each element to whatever you want, whether it's the text box, shape, stack group, overlap group, anything like that. So in this case, I'm going to call this cover image. So I know that that's what that element is for and where I am in my contain various containers. Now from here, I'm going to add another stack group. And when you go in there and go to layer, I'm going to leave it as vertical left. So everything is automatically left aligned. When you go back to items, now we need to add some elements. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit the tech or the plus box and add a text box. In the text box, I'm going to change the text to pull the album information, artist and track title. So I'm going to delete what's there. Under music info, you'll see the first three items are what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go to current album, hit the check mark. The one thing I want to do also before I move further is to make sure that the width of my container fits my widget here um, to one line because some tracks are really long, some podcast titles are really long, and I don't want it to um, create a weird formatting issue. So what you're going to do is under type, you're going to change it from fixed font height to fixed width. So now you get a couple of extra options in this um, text box. For the width, I'm going to change it to um, ensure that the width goes about as far as the width of my screen. And I'm going to change it, the max lines from zero to one. Zero usually just means that it's going to um, go as far as it can, but you can also set multiple items. So, you know, for example, if you have long track titles that are you know four lines but that's all you're showing then you can set it to four so it stops at there or three or two or whatever you want i'm also going to change the um, size of my text to 25 just to make it a little bit more visible when i um, go back to my home screen now the beauty here is i don't have to redo all of these items all over again within custom live wallpaper maker you can copy and paste certain elements so i'm going to touch this checkbox and hit the copy button up here at the top and then paste it twice. So that way I now have three element, three text boxes elements that are the same. Now I just have to change what information is tied to each item. So I'm going to go to the second line. I'm going to go back to edit my text and I'm going to change the second line to the artist and check mark. I'll go back go to the third line and I'm going to change the third one to the track title. So delete that and go to music and track title and check. Now that's all set. So now I want to set the position of this particular text box. But the other thing to remember is that we're going to, what I'm going to ultimately do and to match my prior media player is set everything in these elements to another stack group. So everything shows up 
um, starting at the top left of the widget and going from there. So now that this is set, the one thing I want to do is have a little bit of spacing between my cover image and my text. So in layer, you'll see that there's this line item for margin that's currently set to zero. I'm going to change that to um, 20 seems like it's a little bit too much, but we'll do 20 for now. And then you can adjust it accordingly if you, as you need. I'm going to go back into my stack group and reduce my text box a little bit so it's less overlapping and it fits within the size of my screen. And I'm just going to adjust them by 20 because that's how much of a margin of 20 I um, set up earlier. So now that we're done with that, I'm going to um, rename the stack group to something that's more relevant so I know which one I'm in. So I'm going to just change it to current track not tracking, so just current track. So that way I know what that's for. Now I want to create an, another overlap group for my progress and also change the colors of that progress bar to match the image or to pull extract from the currently playing tracks cover image. So we're going to do another overlap group. I'm going to rename it now just so I have it handy. And I'm going to call it progress. So something simple, something easy to remember. I know where it's at, but you can call, you know, progress bar overlap or progress bar settings or whatever you want that's ma that makes it easy for you to remember. So from here, we're going to start with something simple, just a simple background shape so we can see um, kind of how far something is going to go and kind of set it up for better positioning. So this shape, I'm going to change it to a rectangle. Now, I am not going to... Um, set it to the screen width because I want a little bit of padding on the left and right of this bar. Earlier we saw that my screen width was a width of 720. So in this case, I'm going to change my width to something a little bit better for, which I'll explain, or why I'm using a round number, but I'm going to change it to something simple like 600. And then as far as the height, this is kind of a big height, so I'm going to change it to something a little bit smaller. So 10 is a little bit bigger, but um, five for me works best, but you can adjust to whatever makes works best for you. Now from here, because this is an overlap group and I want the progress to match itself or the other elements, I'm going to do plus and add another shape. This is also going to be a rectangle and I'm going to change the height to five so it matches the background bar that I just set. Now in this case, I'm going to set the width as a formula because I want the progress to match the playtime of my track. So I'm going to touch the check bar, hit the calculator. Now when I touch the calculator, I want this formula to be a percentage of the track progress, but ultimately be the end result of the width of the bar that I've set. So when you go to music info and scroll down, you'll see current track position and percentage. Now this starts at zero, stops at 100, but then our bar is a width of 600, so it's only going to stop a sixth of the way through. In order to make it match, you're going to still select this, but what you're going to do is next to the dollar sign, you're going to add times six. So essentially, it's just doing basic math here where it's multiplying the current tracks percentage times six. So once it gets to 25 percent, it's going to show 25 percent of the progress bar, 50 percent, 75 percent. But real time, so, you know, one second, two, three, four, five, six seconds all the way to the end of the track. Now, from here, we want to make one adjustment because right now it's an overlap group. Everything is center justified. So you're going to go to position, change it from center to center left. So now this progress bar that we're overlapping with the white bar is going to start at the left and at the right. But now you're asking yourself, well, isn't your both of your bars white? So how am I going to see this? So from here, you're going to change the last setting, which is paint, and you're going to change the color to another formula to extract from the vibrant color of your currently playing tracks image. So when you go down back to bitmap, pal bitmap palette, you'll see the second line that says extract vibrant color from cover art. You're going to touch that, hit the check mark. So now it's going to pull the vibrant color from your um, currently playing track. Now, that's all you really need to do. You have a nice bar that's showing progress as it goes along the the background. And that's just a personal thing. You don't necessarily have to do that or have that background white bar. But for me, it's a good, just a good placeholder. So I know that's where the bar is going. Um, you can also do one other form of progress in the form of the dot, which is a little bit different. And I will show you that subtlety in case you're curious. 
So when you hit the plus sign and do shape, I'm going to change this shape to a dot. But because this is going to, or a circle technically, but because this is not just a width element, this is a moving dot that's not doesn't have anything residual behind it, um, the position you're going to still set to center left, but you're going to change the left padding to the same formula we set with the bar of the music playtime in percentage times six. So this dot will move um, with your music as it's playing. So music info, current track position, position and percentage, and make it times six. Now in this case, you can still change the color if you want to, but because it's a dot and it's moving across the bar background, you don't necessarily have to change it, but you can still change the color to be a formula if you so choose. Or if you're like me and you're, cha you're using the um, um, bar and dot as a progress, then um, it just kind of makes for a unique theme. So now for the last element we're gonna add is playback controls because obviously you, you're creating all of this on your home screen, you wanna be able to control your music. So we're gonna create a stack group in the base overlap group of our media player. I'll call this something simple like playback controls. So when, if I'm ever going back to change things, something doesn't look right, I know exactly which element to go through. So in here, the layer again is defaulting to vertical left, but we want the icons to be horizontal. So I'll do horizontal center, but you can use any one of these depending on how your home screen is set up. I'm just doing a setup for me. Um, from here, we're gonna add three icons, in, the, in, the, in this case, font icons. Now, when you click on that, you'll have um, pre-installed sets in this case. I'm gonna keep it as a material, but you have other options if you want to play around with what's built in. But if you're using um, Icon Z to extract images from your, or icons from uh, another icon pack, and that has um, playback controls that you like, um, like for example, one over another in that icon pack, then you can use those as well. But you would use the image element instead of the font icon. So from here, from here we're gonna change the icon from star to first the previous or back button. So you'll search for previous. And then you're going to go to touch and you're going to add a touch element. So when you touch the back button, you wanted to use your music controls and you wanted to go previous. So, for example, in podcast clients, it will use your podcast clients default previous settings, whether it's 30 seconds, 10 seconds, a minute, whatever. In the case of uh, music tracks, it will, for example, go to the beginning of the track and then the previous track. Now, much like the track title, track information for album, artist, and title, I'm gonna copy these two elements. So I have the same icon size and all and settings and all of that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my next icon and change that to the next one because in the play pause button, I want that to be a formula and you can set a formula for that as well. So I also need to make sure I touch the change or change the touch element from the previous to next. So now that that's done, um, I'm going to change my play pause element to a formula, but the first thing I need is the name of the icons. So I'm going to search for play and I'll see, I see that my play arrow is called play underscore arrow. And for the pause icon, it's just called pause. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. Oh, and I already forgot the name of my play icon name. So play underscore arrow. Okay, so we're going to change the icon to a formula and we're going to touch the calculator just like the um, background formula. I'm going to say dollar sign if mi uh, state equals playing, then I want it to show the pause button um, because when your music is playing and you want it to pause, you should see a pause button. And then if it's music is not playing, then I wanted to show the play arrow. So that means I know that music is not playing and I, once I put, if I push the play button, it's going to play music. So in this case, the parentheses will be simpler. So close parentheses dollar sign. So right now it's gonna show the play arrow. Now I'm gonna go, oh, and before I forget, I'm gonna go to the touch item. I'm gonna change my music control touch item to play pause. In this case, play and pause are the same um, net effect, so you, that's why you only need to, you can put both the items in one um, font icon. 
Now I'm going to go back to my listing of icons and I'm going to go to layer and I'm going to actually increase the margin a little bit. Um, you can technically go as high as, you know, the width of your screen if you want to make them that far apart. Uh, for me, around 60 is right for my thumbs. Um, but you can change, you can leave it at zero. They're good enough apart, or you can make them, you know, 40 or whatever to whatever fits according to your home screen, your thumbs, um, easeability of use and things like that. So now for the last item, you see that all my elements are right now are overlapping each other right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to put all of those in a stack group that's vertical center oriented. So what you'll do is you'll highlight the three items. You're going to touch these dots at the top and cut. And now I'm going to do plus and stack group. And now when I go down in this group to stack group, I can paste all the items, but everything is left justified. So that's fine if that's what you like it. You know, if you're left handed like me or if you're right handed and you want everything um, right justified, then um, you can do that as well. Whatever is whatever works best for you to make it look right for you. So for me, I'm going to do vertical center. So it looks like that. I'm going to increase the padding a little bit so that there's a little bit of space between the items. Uh, 20 looks like it's about right. And then from here, you'll see that now my background is oversized a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my shape and I'm going to reduce my height a little bit. So whatever fits right um, for me. So I'm actually going to make one last change for my stack group that I just said. I'm going to change the position to top left. So that way I have no padding on my album art for this particular widget. And that way it um, kind of seamlessly fits as best as possible. And then I'm going to continue reducing the um, width of my background. So that looks like it's about right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit and save. So all these changes I just made will save. And now when I hit my play on the widget that I just made, the play and pause button changed and the background color changed. When I hit the next button, the color still changed. And I'm showing you this to show as a reference to something I did before. And you can see that the colors will automatically change. Now, one of the things I didn't show, but you can still do is you can nest um, an overlap group inside a stack group. So much like you see in my widget up here at the top, which I can show you as um, I'm talking. So I'll go back, edit my wallpaper in my music or my media player widget and my stack group for my progress bar, which I still call progress, I have an overlap group for the bar, which is what I just did, created with a background bar, progress bar, and progress dot. But I also have the time of the track, which I have pulling the position of the track, which is in music info, current track position. Um, in this case, I only edited the formula to also pull the hours of the track just because when I'm listening to podcasts from time to time, some of them are over an hour long. So having that information is handy. And then in the duration track or duration text information, I have the length of the track pulled. Same thing. I added the hours element. So I have that. And then for the playback controls and media app, it's just a nested footer um, elements where one I have a stack group that's a horizontal center and then I have two more horizontal stack groups for my playback controls um, in this case I put a circle around my play button just because I wanted that to fit a little bit better having the play and pause icon with nothing around it seemed kind of plain and simple and you have that for comparison for me so some of you might not like it some of you may like it but for me I like having the circle around it and then my media apps are just um, images that I have pulled from my um, icon pack that I have installed a Reeve Pro so I pulled the music Olay icon and then the Google podcast icon I am using antenna pod but there wasn't an icon for that so I use the next best item and both of these are touch elements which are set to launch an app and in the music music player set to music Olay for the podcast it's um, antenna pod so um, for me, and you'll notice that the width of my current media player is only is a little bit smaller than the one I set up right now. And that's because I set the background to 680. Um, I could do 700 or 720, but that puts it too close to the edges of my screen. And I wanted a little bit of that padding there 
just for the sake of having padding. So um, for me, that's kind of the width I like, but everybody's um, preferences and choices and things like that are unique and different. So you can set it to whatever you want. And for that matter, you don't even need to necessarily um, do all of the things I said. You could just as easily create an um, overlap group which I'll stick in the um, middle of my screen to go back to what I mentioned in the uh, beginning of the review. I'll do a, or I'll create a shape and I'm going to do a circle. I'll set it to something really big for now, so 300. I'll still use the texture to be a bitmap and pull my current um, track image information. And then you can set a um, progress bar for your music playtime and pull the colors from your cover image as well. So you'll change your progress from battery to music playtime, um, flat progress. So it's just going to be a solid color. I'll change the style from linear to circular. So in this case, the size is 300. My shape is 300. So perfect there. Um, for the progress bar style, you can also change the height to be something thinner if you want. So um, I guess 10 is kind of still a little bit thick, but works, I guess. And then you can change the colors as well. So if you want to do something like just like the progress bar I created where um, the, the primary color is the vibrant color and then the background color is... Uh, muted color then you can do that the only thing to kind of pay attention to here is sometimes you'll have cover images that are you know a lot of black and silver or black and white and things like that so you're gonna get a lot of colors that are black and then your progress bar will be black on black or things like that so what I do in this case or what I would do in this case is I set my vibrant color or sorry, not my vibrant color, but my muted color to be a formula of the muted color with black. So it kind of offsets the tone a little bit because for the most part, while uh, a cover image might look black, it might be a little bit off black. So it kind of offsets that overlap so you can still see your progress bar a little. And you can actually do that simply by doing CE for color editor. At the end, you'll hit another comma and I'll change the um, color to black. And then I'll change it to 50. So what this is doing is actually merging the muted color from my cover image with black by 50%. So it's half of one, half of the other. And you get a slightly darker tone that is a little bit less um, muted. So that way you can more easily see the primary color of your progress bar. So um, that's really the bulk of that. And so once my music starts playing, you'll see that the progress bar goes around. The muted color is a little bit darker. So um, it's a, that much more um, vibrant of a solid color or a primary color that uh, you're looking at. So that's all there is for this review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, something didn't quite look right, or you want me to repeat something or help you find a particular feature, then you can comment on this post on YouTube at youtube.com slash PatelN01 or on this post on Twitter at PatelN01. So that's all there is for this review. So of course, thank you for listening and following along with this review. Um, like I said, if you comment on this post, I can help you out there. And of course, I would appreciate your subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell to get updated information as I post gameplay videos, uh, reviews, and all of that good stuff. And or you can follow me on Twitter at PatelN01 to get updates on what I'm up to there as well. And of course, the last bit of information, the website is headphonesneal.reviews for uh, so for all subscription options, how to support the sh podcast, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular review, and until next time.